Shove it, man! Shove it, squad. Today is going to be a bit more of a sombre episode of Ring of the Hawk than we're used to. As you might all be aware, we lost two big names in the pro wrestling business recently, of hardcore legend Terry Funk and Bray White passing away. We here on the Shove It Show decided to dedicate this specific video to Terry Funk, an absolute madman who was one of the most indestructible and craziest hawks to ever come across the screen of any company that he was in. Terry Funk will be forever missed, and today on Ring of the Hawk, we're going to cover his brief run in the WWF during the Attitude Era as dedication. Jesus, we did not realise he had so many matches for the WWF in 1998, so we thought this would be a good video too. So one last time before we begin, rest in peace Terry Funk. So Terry Funk actually appeared in the 1997 Royal Rumble, but that's not where we're going to start today's video. The actual run starts in the Royal Rumble match 1998. There's no need to hate. So here we go, match one. Terry Funk as Chainsaw Charlie will be entering this match as the entrant of number two with hardcore counterpower Cactus Jack entering at number one. Chainsaw Charlie happily runs into the ring with a chainsaw, and Cactus Jack dumps this nappy of fear and starts throwing chairs at Charlie in the ring, whilst Charlie tries to deflect them with a chainsaw. Cactus and Chainsaw start hitting each other in the head with the chairs. They have a chair sword fight. Terry Funk pulls up his pants and hose over his head and tells Foley to hit him, and he whacks him on the top of his little head like a nail. Cactus Jack a little later says the same thing to Chainsaw, and then he gets hit in his head. Not once, not twice, but thrice. It sure wasn't nice. Number three comes out, and I've no idea who this guy Tom Brandy is, but our hardcore duo eliminate him as soon as he enters. Cactus Jack sets up a chair bridge in the ring, and Funk gets a suplex through it. Chainsaw and Cactus Jack start working together, and Funk hits a headbutt on the rock, which sends him into the trash can shot from Foley. They take the opportunity and put the trash can on the rock's head and start throwing some punches. Now Terry Funk climbs up to the top rope, which is an odd move in a Royal Rumble, and he gives Headbang and Mosh a moonsault, in which he barely connects. Middle-aged and crazy. Cactus Jack sets Chainsaw Charlie up for a clothesline. Charlie holds the ropes, and Jack gets eliminated. Didn't expect him to outlast Cactus Jack. Terry Funk is able to avoid an elimination for Steve Blackman, but shortly after he's hit with a power driver by one of the Harris twins, and then right after that, Bradshaw gives Charlie a powerball. Chainsaw Charlie doesn't do anything for a while in the Rumble until Mick Foley returns to the Rumble in his Mankind persona. They both begin exchanging blows and then Mankind actually eliminates Charlie. This was certainly a unique way to start a Royal Rumble and Terry Funk doing these crazy spots and taking these brutal moves in a Royal Rumble is certainly commendable. And not to mention he lasts a little longer than halfway through the match. Let's give it a C. Match 2, Raw. Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack versus the Quebecers. Before the match can begin, Cactus Jack clotheslines Pierre on the outside and Charlie takes the fight to Jack on the ring apron. Charlie eats a power driver from Jack in the ring, but Funk gets right up and he starts parading around the ring and starts getting his face slammed into every turnbuckle. Funk eventually takes too much pain and collapses on the ground. Pierre is now the legal man and he gives a sit-out power driver to Charlie. God, Funk's brain has to be more scrambled than it already was. Cactus saves Funk from getting a third power driver from the Quebecers by clotheslining Jack. Foley gets into an argument with the ref and then he puts him in the mandible claw. The Quebecers then drop Terry Funk face first with a double stun gun on the ropes. The bell rings and the match is thrown out for DQ, giving the Quebecers the win. Terry Funk then lands on all three competitors with an apron Vader bomb to the floor. Whilst I admire the bumps and everything Terry Funk is taking, he literally had zero offense in this match and just got his ass whooped for a DQ loss. It's a C for what he's taking, but he needs to start doing a little bit more otherwise his grades are going to start slipping. Match 3 Raw Tag Title Match Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack vs the Champions of New Age Outlaws As we begin, we're showing how Charlie debuted in the WWF. Charlie runs into the ring with a chainsaw and the match starts going. I believe Terry Funk and Road Dog will kick this one off. Billy Gunn hits Jack with a baseball mask whilst the ref isn't looking and then Chainsaw Charlie hits Road Dog with DDT for a two count. The Outlaws do some damage on Charlie for a little bit until Charlie gets hit with a back suplex and gets the tag to Cactus Jack. Chainsaw Charlie starts tossing chairs from ringside into the ring. One of them hits Billy Gunn in full view of the referee, but DQ isn't cool. Someone smack this ref one. Eventually, the hardcore tag team both grab chairs and they hit the Outlaws in unison for a DQ loss. Cactus Jack starts giving the claw to the referee in annoyance. This match was just like the last one, except Charlie got one bit of offense in during it. It's an S. Sorry. After the match, they cover Road Dog with chairs, and then Funk climbs to the top and hits a moonsault onto Road Dog, landing ribs first on the chairs. Alright, we'll bump it up to a D, that was cool. Match 4, Raw, hardcore match, Chainsaw Charlie vs Cactus Jack. Charlie walks down to the ring with a cart full of weapons, and there's a bunch of balloons at ringside that the crew still haven't cleaned up. We see a previous promo tape with Mick Foley and Terry Funk. Funk talks about how there's so much riding on this match because the winner would be the uncrowned king of the hardcores. Funk says he loves Mick like a son, but he won't do tonight. The match starts and Cactus Jack counteracts Terry's cart and dumps them that it's full of weapons, and then Funk makes his way up the ramp with a chair. 
Jack hits Funk with a trash bag full of soda cans and then he gives Funk the butterfly DDT on the still floor for a two count. Foley pulls a ladder from out of the dumpster and just throws it into Funk's face. The ladder is set up on the floor on the stage. Jack tries to hit a suplex, but Terry gets a small package on Foley, and then they start continuously rolling down the ramp. That old comedy chestnut. Charlie starts filling the ring with three garbage cans, and then Jack picks one up and hits Terry. Not once, not twice, but thrice. And Terry falls to the outside. Jack looks to hit him a third time, but Foley is crazy and tells Terry to hit him with the trash can instead. Terry gets a running start and then stops in his tracks. As Foley turns around, Funk cheap socks him with the trash can and starts battering Foley and then tosses it in Cactus's face. He got what he asked for. Foley puts the trash can on Funk's head and gives him some stomps. And Foley gives Funk a pile driver whilst the trash can is still on him. Jesus, does Funk want his shoulders or is he insane? You know what, on second thought, don't answer that one. We come back from the break and Funk is doing his famous ladder spot on Foley on the stage. Chainsaw Charlie finds a table and he sets Foley up for a pile driver for it, but Foley hits a bat body drop instead into the dumpster on him. It continues going badly for Funk as Foley puts him in the mandible claw into the dumpster and then he sets up a ladder and starts climbing up to the Titan Tron, where he then gives Funk an elbow drop off the top into the dumpster. Amazing moment. Not even 10 seconds after, the Outlaws appear and they start tying the dumpster shut with both hardcore legends trapped inside. The Outlaws have devious thoughts and they start clearing a path where they then push the dumpster off the stage to an outstanding ovation for the crowd. I think this is one of the only times a hardcore match has ended in a no contest and I was completely fine with it. This was a fairly long match for Raw and I didn't expect it. I'll give it a B. We come back from a break and a bunch of locker room geeks come out and the dumpster is open where everyone is worried about the 10 foot drop that just occurred to the two men. We go to another break and everyone is still checking on our guy. Eventually they both get put in an ambulance. Match 5, In Your House 20, No Way Out of Texas. Chainsaw Charlie, Cactus Jack, Owen Hart and Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Savio Vega, New Age Outlaws and Triple H. A no DQ 8-man tag match. The match breaks down before it can even begin as Austin starts firing away on Triple H and everyone starts attacking their respective opponents. Our guy's hitting Road Dog in the face for serving tray. Charlie gets in the ring with Road Dog and he hits him with some sort of garbage bag in the face. I have no idea what it is. He then throws Road Dog face first into a table in the corner. Charlie tries taking advantage with a trash can. Triple H dodges a shot from Funk and gets hit in the face. I feel like Funk forgot who his team members are because Triple H hits a power bomb for a two count. Funk does nothing to even try and break up the pit. Triple H gives Terry Funk four shots to the head of a trash can, but then Charlie hits him with a lid. Triple H gives him a few more shots. Triple H and Chainsaw Charlie seem to be having a competition on who can scramble whose head first. Funk then goes back to fighting Road Dog again, but the Road Dog hits a low blow and then power bombs Funk through a chair bridge. Everyone is now on the apron and Billy Gunn sits Funk down with a pile driver on a trash can lid for a two count. Funk is really isolated now. He's hung up on the apron and Triple H hits him in the face of a chair a couple times and Funk falls on his face to the floor. It seems that Chainsaw Charlie has taken enough damage because he spends the rest of the match on the apron. The match is won by Team Chainsaw after Stone Cold hits the stunner on Road Dog for the three count. Funk got hit with his normal brutal spots in this match, but after he got hit, he didn't do anything else for the rest of the match. Give it a C and call it even. Match 6, Raw Tag Match. Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack versus Mark Mero and Gold Dust. Mark Mero, Gold Dust and Luna all dumping their nappies with fear when Funk revs up the chainsaw. Chainsaw Charlie and Gold Dust to start this match. Gold Dust takes his hand off Funk out of the corner and then Gold Dust kisses Funk and then Funk smacks him back down as punishment. Quick tags from the hardcore tag team. Finally, Funk does something and hits a power driver on Mark Mero for a two count. The match all turns to turd though because Sable comes out and makes it all about her. Mark Mero gets distracted by Luna destroying Sable's gift and the ref gets distracted and then everyone gets distracted. This causes Cactus Jack to hit Gold Dust in the face of a chair and then Funk gets the pinfall victory for his team. Well, the hardcore duo certainly weren't the main focus, but at least Funk got a win here. Not a shove it, but a D. Match 7, Raw. Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack versus the Corvettas in a tag match. The bell rings and the match begins, breaking down with Charlie going after Jack, tossing him onto the outside. Pierre grabs Charlie's foot off an Irish whip and for some reason the screen starts going static. The Quebecers do some damage on Funk, hitting some double team moves on him for a little bit until he's able to get the tag to Cactus Jack. Funk knocks PCO down with a punch and he climbs up to the top rope for the moonsault, but nobody's home as Jack moves out of the way. Chainsaw Charlie runs into the ring and hits an elbow on Jack and then Foley drops Pierre with a butterfly DDT for the win. Funk hit one punch and that was the most effective thing he did in this match. It's an easy S. It seems the feud with the Outlaws is still going because Funk gets smashed in the back with a chair. Match 8, Raw. Chainsaw Charlie versus Billy Gunn. The New Age Outlaws come out of a dumpster spray painted with the words Jack's house on it. The Outlaws just make a bunch of elderly jokes and talk about how they're not losing the World Tag Team Championships to two relics. The match starts out and Charlie starts firing away with some punches to Gunn on the apron. Road Dog's doing running commentary on the microphone throughout the match. 
The gun starts hitting some chops to the funk on the outside. Billy throws Funk back into the rain, he plants him on his head with a pile driver. Road Dog then commands Billy Gunn to give him another one. Billy Gunn stops the free count himself. Billy Gunn tries to throw some more punches, but Chainsaw Charlie stops him with two DDTs. The match is then called off when Road Dog runs into the ring and hits Funk with the World Tag Team title. They soon regret that because Funk takes Billy Gunn out with a DDT on top of the title belt. Funk and Foley have a rope all the way hanging from the ceiling and Funk ties Road Dog's feet up to it and then they start pulling the rope up and Dog starts ascending to the rafters. Funk is slapping Road Dog in the face like a human pinata and Foley tells Road Dog that his ass better call somebody. I was going to give this match an S but that trap at the end for the Outlaws wrote me back in. No pun intended. So let's be nice give it a D. It's like when your girl's with the whore. Match 9, Raw. Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack versus the Quebecers. Again. The ultimate rematch, I guess, as we get this match thrice. And this time, Cactus Jack and PCO will start out. Jack starts lighting up Foley with some clotheslines. And then when Jack turns around, he gets hit with a clothesline from Chainsaw. As the match rolls on, the Outlaws come out to the stage, rolling out a dumpster and a bottle of champagne. They're also wearing tuxedos, which distracts Cactus Jack. Terry Funk gets blindsided by Jack, and when Foley tries to assist, he gets hit with a drop kick on the apron. Chainsaw Charlie eventually gets the tag. Badass Billy Gunn runs into the ring and starts attacking Foley, and we're going to have another DQ ending here. It's an S. Too many of these going on. After the match, the New Age Outlaws throw a patio table on Funk in the ring, and then they break it over his head, and they give Foley a pile driver onto a steel chair. This one's getting serious now. Match 10, WrestleMania 14. Dumpster match for the WWF tag titles. Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack versus the champions of New Age Outlaws. It looks like for Funk's first WrestleMania, he'll be appearing as himself as there's no chainsaw in sight. Funk starts out the match hammering away on Billy Gunn on the outside. The only way to win this match is to put both your opponents into the dumpster. Funk gets hit with an Irish whip into the barricade and follows up with another Irish whip to Road Dog and Bat Body drops Funk into the dumpster and they shut the lid. Funk climbs out of the dumpster during the replay and the Outlaws start slamming the lids on top of both their opponents' heads. The Outlaws rip off Funk's shirt and gives him a chop before tossing him back into the dumpster. The New Age Outlaws take too much time and Jack has the mandible claw on both men. Mick Foley tries climbing out of the dumpster but Billy Gunn hits him in the face for a surfing tray and then Funk rises out of the dumpster and hits Billy with a tray of his own. Terry Funk moves on to give Road Dog DDT onto the same tray and Cactus Jack starts filling the ring with weapons, especially a big ladder. Foley starts climbing the ladder, and when Gunn pushes Funk away, he climbs up and starts fighting with Foley. Road Dog hits Terry Funk with a tray, and this causes Terry Funk to fall into the ladder, and then Gunn and Foley go crashing into the dumpster. Billy Gunn somehow isn't dead from that one, he gets up on the apron, and then power bombs Funk into the dumpster. The Outlaws start brawling with Cactus Jack near the WrestleMania stage. They fight to the backstage area. Terry Funk isn't involved with the match for a while, as Foley brawls with the Outlaws. But Terry Funk suddenly reappears, driving a forklift. Foley drops Billy Gunn with a double arm DDT onto the pallet and then loads Road Dog on with his partner. They lift both men up on the forklift and dump them into a dumpster. Cactus Jack shuts the lid and Funk sits the pallet on top of the dumpster and our hardcore duo have become the new world tag team champions. That was an insanely fun match, lots of cool moments, great hardcore wrestling and quite a comical ending. Not to mention we have a championship win on Ring of the Hawk, which is rare. So let's give it an A if you care. Funk really has a chance of winning this series of Ring of the Hawk if he's able to keep up this momentum. Match 11, Raw. Tag Team Title Steel Cage Match for the Vacant World Titles. For the Vacant World Tag Team Titles. What? Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack versus the Outlaws again. So what happened here was sadly our duo wouldn't be the champions for long as they were forced to vacate their titles after the Outlaws would state that a dumpster they were dropped in was the wrong dumpster. It, it was different to the one they were meant to use, therefore the match ending was invalid. Well at least we get a rematch and another stipulation, even though I admit that the explanation is pretty funny. Kind of right in a way. Funk starts out by getting his shirt ripped off, and Gunn starts giving him some strikes to the spine. Terry Funk and Foley work together and give Billy Gunn a double suplex into the cage. Billy Gunn just hangs there from the top. Funk continues to fire away on Gunn with some face punches until Road Dog wraps Terry's suspenders around his neck. The Outlaws have some handcuffs and they wrap the cuffs around Terry's neck around the cage and he's stuck watching as the Outlaws start double teaming Foley. Foley sends Billy Gunn into the cage with a catapult and then he moves over to Funk where Terry actually gets a strike while restrained. Billy Gunn lands in his nutsack on the top rope and then DX have to come to his rescue with X-Pac hitting Foley in the face of the chair whilst he's hanging off the top of the cage. The chair gets tossed into the ring to Road Dog and they give Foley a spike pile driver on the chair for the three count. After this match, all of DX start a massacre on the hardcore duo and all Terry Funk can do is watch on as DX start hitting finishers on Cactus Jack. It was a pretty quick cage match, I had hoped for more. It had the brutality, but the outside interference was a little bit overdone, I'm gonna give it a D. 
Match 12, Raw. Terry Funk and Too Cold Scorpio versus the Quebecers. It looks like the Chainsaw Charlie gimmick has been dropped and now Funk is just going by his real name. Terry Funk gets on the microphone before this match and announces that he has a new partner because Foley has walked out on the WWF. Terry Funk says he's ready to put Funk in everyone's face because his partner is hardcore and it's Too Cold Scorpio. Scorpio recently dropped his Flash Funk gimmick, so the Funk dynamic is here, I guess? But as I try and wrap my beak around that one, the Quebecers jump Terry Funk. The Quebecers light Funk up for a little bit until he gets the tag to Scorpio, who starts cleaning house on the French tag team. Scorpio moves out of the way of an assisted senton attempt, but Funk blindsides Jack with a strike, which allows Scorpio to hit a 450 splash on Pierre for the win. I guess you could say this was a squash debut match, officially, because Terry Funk is a new character, and this is a new tag team. I don't know, they never explained it either. It was a tag team match that happened. It's a D. Match 13 Raw. Terry Funk and Too Cold Scorpio vs The New Midnight Express. Scorpio and Bob Holly will start us off. When Funk gets tagged and he hits a net break and starts chopping Bob on the ropes. Bart and Bob bombastically bombard Funk with bumps and headbutts until Funk collapses. Funk eventually makes the tag and Scorpio gives Bart a springboard kick into the ring. The Express distract Funk and the referee whilst Bob Holly gives Scorpio a pile driver. The Express then follow that up and give Funk a spike pile driver. Too Cold Scorpio flies over to the top and takes out his opponents. Then once he gets back in the ring, he looks for a moonsault, but that gets countered. Scorpio also has counters for zone as he counters a superplex attempt from Bob, but Scorpio knocks him down and gives him the 450 splash for the win. Immediately after the match, the beast Dan Severo and gives Scorpio a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Funk only took a couple of bumps, barely got any offense in this match, so this one can shove it. Match 14, tag match, Terry Funk and Too Cold Scorpio versus the Head Bangers. What a weird run this is, I don't remember any of this happening. It looked like we were about to start the match with a handshake, but Too Funky decided to start firing away on the headbangers. Too Funky with a double back body drop on Thrasher before Mosh flies in with a double clothesline. Weird sequence here, opposite Irish whips from opposite team members leads to Scorpio getting a back body drop from Mosh and then Funk with a clothesline and then Thrasher follows up a clothesline to Funk. Get your head around that, you punk. The headbangers on the outside start fighting Scorpio on the floor. 53-year-old Terry Funk climbs to the top rope and delivers a moonsault onto all three opponents on the outside. All four men are now in the ring hammering away at each other. Mosh and Terry both toss the referee away and the ref calls for the bell. The fight continues as Scorpio hits a gut wrench power bomb and then a moonsault. The headbangers respond with a big superplex diving splash combination on Scorpio. I'm giving it a D because Terry Funk did a moonsault to the outside but there wasn't really much here in honesty. Match 15, Terry Funk versus Mick Foley, no holds barred, fools count anywhere match. Pat Patterson's the guest referee. Stone Cold believes that Pat Patterson as referee is a load of crap and thinks it's a rib. Funk and Foley start throwing some shots, and they're a house on fire in the early game. They start brawling to the outside where Foley starts whacking Funk with a steel barricade, and then Funk returns the favour of an unprotected chair shot. He does this a few times to Mrs. Foley's baby boy. It's hard to follow the action in the early game because the focus is more on Stone Cold Steve Austin's microphone being messed up and him punching down Jerry Lawler to take his microphone. Whilst the camera is away, the floor mat is pulled up exposing the concrete. We see Foley's been busted open. I'm surprised it's taken 15 matches for this run to finally see this red fluid leaking out in this video. Foley looks for a power driver on the concrete, but Funk Bat body drops him onto the floor instead. Terry tosses Funk over the barricade, but it falls over whilst Funk goes sailing over it. Whilst we try and get a view of the action, Stone Cold takes a shot of his beer on top of the table. Mick Foley starts beating the hawk out the hot dog guy for some reason, and then Foley gives the guy a suplex on the floor. Terry Funk goes climbing into the fan section, and off the balcony he goes as he hits a moonsault off the railing onto a bunch of geeks and Mick Foley. Foley responds by pulling Terry Funk up onto a table, giving him a pile driver through it. He doesn't go for a pinfall though because he pushes Funk through the bleachers instead. Stone Cold is very angry as we cut to commercial. I know how he feels. And then we come back, Funk goes flying into a backstage table and hit a trash can full of rubbish for a two count. We do head back to the ring, but not for long because Foley of a running start and close on over the ropes to the outside once again. Mick Foley rips the announce table apart and sits Funk across it. He grabs a chair and once he gets back up to the apron, he slams the chair off the back of Funk off the announce table. Somehow Funk kicks out of that too. The kickouts continue as Mick Foley hits the double arm DDT, but Funk is a hardcore icon who kicks out at two. Mick Foley's trying to kill Terry Funk here as he does the cactus special. He then sits the chair down and one more time he drops Funk with a par driver. This time on a chair, and this is enough to give him the win. Another fun hardcore match between these two guys. Wait, no, Mick Foley grabs his old friend's head and starts slamming it face first into the chair. This causes Steve Austin to retaliate with a Steve Weiser. Anyway, it was a great hardcore match between these two really cool moments. That moonsault off the railing was insane from Terry Funk. 
Let's give it another A. It's a highly watchable match. I mean, come on, this is what we need. We need more of Terry Funk taking crazy bumps and being indestructible. This is what could drive him to be a championship contender on Ring of the Hall. Match 16, Raw. Two on three handicap match. Terry Funk and Two Cold Scorpio versus Kai and Tai. Yamaguchi-san distracts them with a promo calling them scumbag Americans, and then eventually all three Kai and Tai members appear from under the ring and start jumping our tag team. Funk hits Dick to go with an atomic drop into Yamaguchi-san on the outside. Scorpio is mostly manhandling all three members of the tag team with power bombs while Terry Funk watches on in amusement. Scorpio misses a moonsault into a triple drop kick which propels him into a tag to Terry Funk. Terry's a hawk on fire and he starts dismantling Kai and Tai, but eventually a numbers game catches up to him. All of a sudden, Bradshaw and Takamichinoka come to the ring and they attack Kai and Tai for the DQ loss for our guys. This match was an S, Funk did nothing. Match 17, Raw, Terry Funk versus Mark Miro. Miro starts out with a cheap shot on Terry on the apron, then Irish whips him into the barricade. Mark looks to Irish whip Funk into the stairs now, but he reverses the Irish whip and Miro goes crashing. Funk gets the marvellous one into the ring and drops him with a power driver, but he only gets a two. And then he hits a net breaker, but that's also just a two. Terry Funk counters a corner clothesline attempt into a lariat and lays out Miro. This is when he starts getting fired up and he starts slamming Miro's head into the corner. Funk elbows the referee when he tries to get him out of the corner and then gives Mark Miro a suplex. This should be a DQ victory for Mark Miro because you can see that elbow was deliberate, but it's not. The match continues and Funk pulls the ref up and Miro takes control of a low blow, but then Sable jumps on the apron as Funk kicks out too. Miro takes about it and drops Funk with a TKO, but it's not over because Miro gets distracted by Sable. Funk turns him around and drops him with a DDT, and that's the free count. This match was all over the place, it's an S. Match 18, Raw, Terry Funk versus Mark Henry in a King of the Ring qualifying match. Funk and Henry lock up into the ropes, and then Funk gives Henry a couple of chops and a net breaker. Mark powers out the pin with ease. Terry Funk looks for a net breaker, but instead kicks Mark right in the nutsack. Henry retaliates with a big lariat and a running elbow. Terry Funk and Mark Henry end up on the outside, and then Funk goes suicidal and attempts the springboard Vader bomb. But Mark catches him in midair, and Funk gets slammed into the ring post. The Irish whip attempt now is countered, and Mark goes cannonballing into the stairs. Funk finds a chair and wraps it across the head of Henry. It took me a second, but the referee turned out at the right moment not to see that. Terry Funk climbs the ropes once again, and Funk delivers a moonsault, but good lord, he landed hip first onto the steel barricade. Henry didn't catch him in time. He is indeed middle-aged and crazy. Back in the ring, Terry Funk gets a two count with a small package. When Henry gets to his feet, he drops Funk with a powerbomb. And then a big splash for the three count. A decent matchup, which did contain some botches, so I'm going to have to meet in the middle ground with a C. Match 19, Raw. World Tag Team Championship number one contender Royal Rumble. Very obscure Rumble match here, but it's basically a Rumble match, but every entrant is a tag team. And if one member of the tag team is eliminated, both members of the tag team are eliminated. Funk and Scorpio will enter at number 10, which is the last number in this rumble, so maybe we'll get lucky. Funk goes right after Kurgan, and Scorpio helps assist him with the elimination. Terry, Funk and Scorpio are actually one of the last two teams besides Kane and Mankind. Funk goes through the middle rope and throws Mankind into the steel barricades. Terry Funk climbs into ring for chair in hand and starts hitting Kane in the head of the chair. Terry Funk ends up getting all tied up in the ropes. Kane drops Scorpio over Tombstone, and Mankind puts the chair in front of Funk's face and boots him for the elimination. You know, we've seen some worse Battle Royal performances on Ring of the Hawk. This one was kinda cool. Great ending too, with a brutal spot. It's a C. Match 20, Raw. Terry Funk vs D'Lo Brown. Doesn't sound like a match that ever happened. Funk stops in his tracks off an Irish whip and D'Lo gets pissed and starts chopping Funk in the corner. D'Lo keeps the same energy and chops Terry Funk on the ropes. Funk retaliates with some punches and then pulls Brown in for a power driver, but only gets a two count. Funk gets some strikes on D'Lo Brown on the outside and then climbs up to the top rope and hits a moonsault, and this time he actually hits it, but he smacks his shins across the railing. Terry Funk climbs up to the top rope and hits the moonsault onto a prone D'Lo Brown for a two count. On the apron, the Godfather has a fist full of golden chains and he hits Funk in the back of the head whilst the ref's back is turned. He should change his name to the Goldfather. D'Lo takes advantage and flies across the ring with the lowdown for the free count. Short but sweet match. Funk did two moonsaults but didn't miss. And other than that, it was pretty middle of the road. Let's give it a C. Match 21. In your house, 23. Fully loaded, 1998. Terry Funk and Bradshaw versus Farouk and Scorpio. Sorry for the quality of this one. For some reason, this is the best I can find. Not sure what happened to the Terry Funk and Scorpio tag team, but it wasn't going anywhere. I guess it wasn't funky enough. I should mention, Funk and Bradshaw are tag team partners that don't get on. Funk gets in the match after Bradshaw has softened up Farouk with some punches and a net breaker. Funk tries to hold Farouk in place for a double team manoeuvre, but Farouk counters with a catching power slam on Bradshaw. 
Scorpio climbs to the top rope, but Funk fakes falling off the ring and Scorpio lands on his nutsack. Funk tosses Scorpio to the floor and he goes crashing into the security railing and then eventually gets sent over it. Funk with the springboard Vader bomb onto Scorpio on the outside. He hasn't hit that much in this video. Back in the ring, Funk rolls out of a two count roll up into a knee from through. Scorpio hits a twisting splash, but Terry Funk's able to kick out of that one at two. But he won't be kicking out the 450 from Scorpio and it's over and Funk has lost. This match was pretty boring compared to the rest of this run and not to mention after the match Bradshaw lays Funk out of a clothesline. I'm not sure where any of this is going. It's a D. By this point though, Terry Funk's body was completely battered and he had to take a little bit of time off. Then he went to the WCW in the year 2000 where he had another short run, although not quite short enough for a Ring of the Hawk episode. He had around 34 matches. It's crazy that this guy just kept going. Anyway, Funk did eventually return to WWE for two more matches in 2006. Match 22, WWE vs ECW head to head, 20 man battle royal. Raw and Smackdown wrestlers are all in the crowd in the ring and the ECW wrestlers are being led to the ring by none other than Perk Angle. Terry Funk is one of the men being led and he helps get an elimination on Matt Hardy with the help of Just Incredible. Terry Funk notices Edge is sitting in the chair on the outside waiting for the next opportunity and Edge takes the advantage and pulls Funk out the ring for the elimination. It's an S. Match 23, final match, and what a match. ECW One Night Stand 2006. Terry Funk, Tommy Dreamer, and Beulah versus Edge, Lita, and Mick Foley in a hardcore match. Edge, Mick Foley, and Lita are in the middle of a promo when Terry Funk, Dreamer, and Beulah come out to an amazing crowd reaction. Beulah says she knows how much Lita likes threesomes, so let's make it a three on three. Lita slaps Beulah, and Beulah tries to rip Lita's face off. Tommy Dreamer and Edge will kick off the hardcore bout. Edge tags in Mick Foley, and Foley starts yelling and wants Terry Funk. Considering this is 8 years later after their last encounter, you can really feel the tension. Terry Funk starts lighting Mick Foley up with some shots, and it seems like Mick Foley just nopes out of them. Funk starts firing away on the barricade with Foley, even catching an open chair to the head. Dreamer smacks Foley over a roadside, and then Funk comes crashing in, hitting Edge in the head with a trash can. Terry Funk holds the trash can against Foley on the apron, and Dreamer gives Mick a drop kick. Now Foley tosses Funk over the barricade and starts giving him some shots whilst he's laying on top of the chairs next to the fans. Terry Funk picks up a huge ladder and starts helicoptering it around his head and taking out both his opponents in the process. He gets the ladder set up and he starts ascending, but Edge then appears out of nowhere and tips the ladder over, sending the now 61-year-old Terry Funk crashing to the mat. Edge and Foley set up a barbed wire board, but Funk pulls out the legs and the board kind of lands on them. Terry Funk and Dreamer work together and they send Foley face first into the barbed wire board and off an Irish whip. Funk gets rid of Edge and then Foley throws the barbed wire board into Funk's face. Funk is stuck and trapped in the barbed wire board, as he was often known to do in ECW. Foley wraps some more barbed wire around Funk's face and starts punching him in the face. Foley grabs the face of Terry Funk and starts grinding the barbed wire across his head. Funk starts yelling in agony about his eyes and he's helped to the back. Funk is gone from the match for a while as Edge, Lita and Foley all start battering Tommy Dreamer and putting Beulah in suggestive positions. All of a sudden, Terry Funk returns with his head bandaged and covered in a strange red liquid. He has a barbed wire 2x4 in his hand and he's parading through the crowd to get back to the match. Funk does make it back to the match and start getting payback on Edge and Foley by swinging for the fences with the 2x4. Bueller and Funk light the barbed wire 2x4 on fire and Funk hits Foley in the gut with it and then Foley's shirt catches on fire. Foley tries to retreat to the apron but Funk hits him with the 2x4 again and Foley goes crashing through the barbed wire board on the outside. Edge manages to respond and knocks Funk to the floor on top of Foley who joins him in the barbed wire pile. The match is eventually won by Team Edge after Edge hits Tommy Drew with a barbed wire edge matic and then spears Beulah in the middle of the ring and then Missionary pins her for the win. This match was great, classic moments, a really memorable match so we're going to end on a high and give him an A. Well that was a fun little run wasn't it? Minus the stuff with Scorpio which seemed a bit pointless, I don't think they knew what to do with Funk at that moment. So let's shove him a final grade for Ring of the Hawk Season 4. I think a final grade of a B is fair. The bumps he took were absolutely brutal, and he just wanted to show how dangerous and crazy he was. Most of the matches that were hardcore he did really well in, but the downside is we got a lot of throwaway matches. The New Age Outlaw stuff was really good, and anything with Funk vs Foley in it was great. I think this run is a great send off to a career that was amazing and crazy. And if you don't agree with that, I'll beat you up because you're fat and you're lazy.